Previously on the PBR. This is the time of year you better know what's at stake. Jess was stomped on in round number one. Four broken ribs, a punctured lung, and a lacerated kidney. Jess is not in danger of missing the PBR World Finals. Eduardo Aparecido has regained the world number one ranking. 90 points! Colbaba clinches Uniondale. Colbaba looks great here this weekend. Riding's big league returns to Olympic City. And with just one month left in the regular season, these riders aren't interested in gold medals, but one very specific gold buckle. Broadmoor World Arena is once again our host, and there is plenty of bovine dynamite set to explode underneath all these cowboys. Last week, Eduardo Aparecido regained the world number one ranking and reminded everyone that Fast Eddie 2.0 is here to stay, here to fight. But everyone might want to get out of the way of the D train. After winning a week ago in New York, Derek Kolbaba continues his high speed pursuit of the top spot, tying for the win in round number one. Defending world champion Bucking Bull Sweet Pro's Bruiser is putting together a late season charge of his own. He's ready to put on another show. While early season front runner Pearl Harbor aims to get back to the standard and caliber of crushing opponents that he has come to be famous for. After this weekend, only three events left in the regular season. Seize the day had better be the motto. In terms of our top 10, Derek Kolbaba continues to kick butt. He is now only 745 points behind Eduardo Aparecido. That number seven man, Fabiano Vieira, he has been out due to injury. For more, let's join Leah Garcia. At seventh at the world standing, Fabiano realizes that he's lost some time. He was injured in Thackerville and he had his uh, jaw wired shut as well as a shoulder injury. I talked to him before the event. He did split the round win last night and he said that he's been doing rehab, but what really got him was one week with his mouth wired shut. He wasn't able to eat. He lost a lot of weight and a lot of fitness, but then he came back strong for the last two weeks. And if I do dare say he's turned a corner, he's committed now to working out till the world finals, Craig. Well, actually, before we go to Craig, I'd like to check in with Shorty Gorham out in the arena. Well, Leah, you know well, uh, at this time of the season, injuries are just part of the norm here, but uh, it's not going to get any easier for the guys today. You want to talk about bull power? We've got bull power. In fact, seven of the top bulls in the industry that are on Cody Lambert's li uh, livestock director, Cody Lambert's list, are here today in the championship round. We'll talk more about them later. The long round uh, today, second go round, it doesn't get any easier. There is a tremendous amount of ranked bulls here this weekend, Leah. Thank you. Ramifications for the bulls and for the riders by the time we're done here. Very close to world headquarters of the PBR. We're just a few miles up the road from Pueblo. Section number one is going to start with Chase Outlaw. He himself making a comeback from injury a couple weeks ago. We'll see newcomer Justin Lloyd and work our way through. 11 men, Justin McBride, with qualified rides in round number one. So that means we will see a few get in just on one. And we're going to start now with Chase Outlaw, who hopes he's that guy. He bucked off fistful of mud in round one in only 2.7 seconds. Here he faces Mar-a-Lago. Well, and I think this is a really good matchup for Outlaw. And, you know, you talk about him having a no score in round one. That, you know, that's tough to overcome. But he's still got a really good chance in this event because Shorty touched on the bull power that's here. They are going to be tough. You're not going to see them ride a lot of the bulls. Outlaw's got a great chance of making the championship round on this bull right here. Gets him that opportunity to have a good pick in the championship round also. Well, and Matt, because our longtime fans know this. I mean, Chase Outlaw is one of those young men, only 25 years of age, that really is a human highlight reel. Anytime he has a chance to make it to eight seconds, it could be 90. Yeah, and the, probably my favorite thing about Outlaw is that he doesn't give up 
not only physically, but mentally. This guy always thinks he's got a chance to win anytime he crawls over into the bucket. Aaliyah, it was a week ago he was mentioning feathers and a ton of feathers, weighs as much as a ton of a bull. Now, were you able to follow up on that at all this week? A little bit of Craig. What his point was in the interview last week is that if you have a ton of feathers, it weighs the same as a ton of bulls. But the bottom line is that if you know you've got to dig a little bit deeper and try a little bit harder, what's one more feather? So it was his way of telling himself, I know I can do more and I will. He's got to do a little something extra against Mar a Lago. This bull's only allowed one qualified ride. It was Savano Alves back in Sioux Falls. with a bang, and we're going to find out how many feathers that eight seconds is worth. 87 and a half. And that's what you do, man, right there. He comes down in round one, knows he has a great bull here today, and he takes advantage of it. Now, he has set himself up to get back into the championship round. Outlaw is still a big factor in this event. 87 and a half equals the two best scores in round one. Let's send it to Leah. Last week you talked about digging a little deeper and carrying one more feather. How's that fit in? Just like every jump, that bull had every opportunity to buck me off. But just like that, can you carry one more feather? And we're never out of the fight. That's for damn sure. Craig. We are going to see Chase Outlaw again in the championship round. Cody Nance hopes to join him. And Mac, he gets to now face a bull that he's had very good success against. He do. They face three times. He's ridden him twice. Nance loves this bull either direction right here. Wow. Hey, hey, hey. But today, he do has the say and the upper hand. Evens it at two apiece. I'm not Nance is a it, little so. behind right out here. You can see he's tipped into his hand pretty big right there. Now he has to really try and get over. Both feet come up. He do had some hop skip to him, some off timing today. Cody had had a couple very good scores, and if he'd been able to hang on against a bull of that caliber, he would have added the third. Instead, his weekend is over. Yeah, we'll talk later. Early on in round number two, trying to wind out our top 15, which will make it to the championship round. This is newcomer Justin Lloyd, the 30-year-old, didn't even start bull riding Mac until the age of 21. Hey, and he's where he wants to be now, though. I mean, that's this is where all these guys, you know, we talk about the world championship race on the bull side and on the rider side. It's all coming down to the end of the season, and guys are trying to make the finals also. You can't forget about that. This guy is in the position he wants to be. He's got a good bull here, should be around to the left. You can see him working the neck rope on that bull, just trying to keep him relaxed, keeping his attention off of this guy, getting ready on him. Should be to the left pretty fast. Let's send it down to Leah once again. So what do you do if you want to be a bull rider and you don't really know how to go about that? Well, what Justin did is he watched a bunch of videotapes, and some of the videotapes said you need to find somebody that you can emulate. So he watched tapes of Jim Sharp, and when he grabbed those tapes, he said, well, one of the differences, Jim Sharp rides with the opposite hand. So what he would do is watch a computer screen with a mirror so that he could try to emulate Jim Sharp riding bulls. I asked him before the show if he's actually able to pull that off riding like Jim Sharp, and he said, not quite. But that's a great Great goal to work toward right there. Jim Sharp is one of the, if not the all-time greatest bull rider. And he has emulated, or at least tries to be emulated, a number of these guys have used Jim Sharp Mac as their example throughout generations, not just Justin Lloyd. Yeah, and, and the one thing that they should all take away is he never lost focus of the bull. Hey. Well, it's a rude awakening when you get to this level and you have to face bulls of this caliber. Justin Lloyd will be 0 for 2 for the weekend, but he's going to have a lot more than five seconds worth of experience to now use. Yeah, and, it, and getting used to the speed of it at this level. I mean, this is a really good bull. This is the kind of bull I do feel like he can ride, but you can't ask for much more out of a bull than this. Turn him back right here, but you can see how he's already got him lifted up. Check out his free arm. He's got to get down here with it. That's a really good bull, though. Justin Lloyd hopes this isn't one and done. The Canadian 
Hopes he gets another event that he can attend. Meanwhile, Brendan Eldridge showing why he belongs. Except Moto Moto does not allow him to add a second score. He had been 85 and a half in round number one. But here he can't double down. Yeah, and Brennan lets that one get away. Moto Moto, that was a great matchup for him. Into his hand, Moto Moto finding his spot a lot quicker than normal. Brennan's got to get that free arm up over his head. Get his weight shifted to the inside on a bull like that. Chase Outlaw was first out of the shoots and got that qualified ride, but since then, some quick buck-offs. Shane Proctor is going to try to get his second score of the weekend. Let's go back 24 hours. Round number one, where he faced Dirty Little Secret. Yeah, and Proctor looked really good right here. Away from his hand, you can see not a lot of wasted motion out of Proctor. You don't have to use your free arm a lot when you're up over the front end every time the bull's front end comes up. In Proctor, so much experience. We often mention how he rodeos as well as rides at this level. Cartridge pulls the trigger, and it doesn't even take four seconds to get Proctor on the ground, and he'll have to hope that 85 and three quarters is enough to bring him back. Smart bull right here. Watch this first round. He really comes back under himself. Proctor feels like I'm too far forward, then the bull steps ahead, and everything is going back on Proctor. That's a good bull. Shane Proctor looks up and wonders if he'll get another chance in the championship round. It almost seems assured, however, that Chase Outlaw, with his 87 and a half to start the day, will be back again. He's your bad boy mower, lead dog of the round. The PBR Built Ford Tough series on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ford F-Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a 2017 Ford F-150 and a trip to the PBR World Finals in Vegas. By Las Vegas, proud host of the 2017 PBR Built Ford Tough World Finals. And by B&W Trailer Hitches, makers of the number one selling gooseneck hitch in America and the official hitch of the PBR. Fabiano Vieira made a triumphant return back in round number one. Yeah, and looked really good doing it. Fabiano, this is one of the toughest guys on tour, Craig. Bad shoulders, always injuries, but he still gets the job done. Derek Kolbaba still has the hot hand. And this is what Kolbaba's got to be doing at this point right here. He has got to be stacking up some wins to keep himself in this world championship race. Eduardo Aparecido, well, guess what? He likes that number one ranking. Talk about what guys got to be doing. Eduardo's doing just that. He's making the other guys have to try and run him down. The flip side of the coin, however, is Kaiki Pacheco, another missed opportunity. Yeah, Pacheco gets called for a slap here, and Pacheco is way better than what he showed, has been showing of late. This guy's got to get it going. It's time to bring you upstairs once again to the PBR's Skybox. And you all know this guy, two-time PBR world champion Justin McBride. I am Craig Hummer. Mac, I think we've done a pretty good job as we march toward Vegas talking about all the guys that are in the running for this world championship. But let's talk about the Bulls. We have two in particular that are having quite the tussle at the top. Yeah, and today we're going to be looking at one of the best bullpens we've seen all year. But they are led by the great <laughs> Bruiser and Pearl Harbor. These are two very similar bulls on paper in their stats, but they could not be any further apart the way they buck. Now, Pearl Harbor, I thought he was the front runner at the beginning of the year, he was the best bull, but as of late, Bruiser has really been the one that's doing all the damage, so this is gonna be a race to the finish between these two. At the moment, statistically, Bruiser and Pearl Harbor tied exactly at 46.3. That is their eight bull average, which is what all these bulls take out of the regular season, their best eight scores. Then when they get to the World Finals, they will add their two outs there, and that will determine the world champion bull of this season. We head back to the shoots and we show you the standings once again. Kolbaba, Fabiano, and Chase Outlaw all tied at 87 and a half. Outlaw's already gone. Kolbaba and Fabiano yet to go in this round. So we get set, set right now, or I should say before one of these riders goes, Joao Ricardo Vieira. Let's check in with Liam. Ricardo Vieira won this event last year and one of the reasons he attributes that to is because there was a Marine, who is retired, who gave him a 
coin, and this coin he has kept in his pocket for the past year. And while it hasn't given him a win weekend after weekend, he said right now it's part of his game, it's part of what he does before the event. And David McBroom, if you're watching this event, knows that Joao Ricardo certainly appreciates that and is using it to his advantage every weekend. We are going to see Joao Ricardo Vieira go after Stormy Wing. They threw a little curveball at us. Stormy Wing now in the suits getting ready. And Matt, he has a chance to add to his 83 from round one. He's got a great chance to not only add to that, but to go to the lead and possibly win this go around. Utter lover, this is a really good bull. Going to get in the air a little bit, kick. Stormy Wing's riding really good right now. The revelatory season of Stormy Wing continues. Our first rider, a perfect two for two, and a chance for him now to win his third event of the season. Let me tell you my favorite thing about Stormy Wing right now. Stormy Wing has always been tough into his hand. You'd see him take his outside foot out, go to spurn, you know, he was always diamonds or dust. But now he's elevated his game. He's just as strong away from his hand. 88 and three quarters, well worth every point. Great job, Stormy Wing. He's with Leah. Stormy, it's been said that you've been changing your technique, sometimes even in the middle of your ride. ride. What can you explain? Just gotta keep moving. Uh, you know, those bulls are bucking, you can't clamp down. When they clamp down, you get they get ahead of you. I'm just having fun doing my job. I want to thank my family, my sponsors. Tell Sweet Marie hello and I love her. When you're having fun at all, it's so easy. Hey, hey, hey. Unfortunately for Joao Ricardo Vieira, the opposite has been happening more often than not, Mac. Joao got a ride in round one, but he's in the midst of struggling these past few events. Yeah, and that is really what's held Joe out out of the world championship race this season. In years past, when a bull like this goes to the left, Joe out does not let him get away. And he's had troubles on bulls that go that direction, and that has really been tough for him to overcome. So Joe Al is gonna have to hope that 84 and three quarters is good enough. Currently, he sits in 10th. And we move to Stetson Lawrence. And he's putting together a pretty good fall run of his own. He bumped off a parachute in round one. And he gets to face a familiar foe here, Wire Green. Both directions. This time, Wired Crazy gets the better of the Cowboy. Yeah, and, and that's one. Stetson had success on that bull before. You heard me say it right when the gate opened. The bull probably go both directions, and Stetson was needing to. He was needing He's a little bit behind around the corner right there. Now he's stuck the whole time. He's got all of his weight is on the left side of that bull. He's trying to get it to the right. He's needing that bull to jump out of it and go the other way for him. Checking in with his good friend Derek Kolbaba there. You see all these riders, this is what they do. It's not necessarily, they don't feel they're competitors with each other. They're a competitor with and against the bull. Gotta have it too, Craig. You gotta have somebody there that can point out what went wrong, fix it right there, and then move on. We mentioned Justin Lloyd earlier in his first ever event. Welcome in Nathan Burtonshaw, the Australian Cowboy, in only his third event up in the big leagues. But Give him credit, right, Matt? He's been to two events, and he's made two championship rounds so far. Hey, that's what, man, that's really impressive to me. That's what you're trying to do. Put yourself in that situation. And based on how well he's written, he's up to 37 in his world standings, and that is a great graphic. He's showing you the cutoff line. 35, and what the guys can do to move him up. Give Big Slick the bull credit, because he just outworked Burton Shaw. Yeah, I'll give the bull credit that that was a nice bull, but here's the deal. Burton Shaw can ride this bull. He gets around the corner, starts him really good. It's a big, long guy right here. Got a lot of free arm to control, but he does a really good job at it. But you see in that ride when his head, watch when his head snaps up right here. He's got to get that down, get his arm down, and get back to the center of that bull and not let his focus get broken and look to the outside. 
That's a talented guy. Burton Shaw, one of the bigger Cowboys on tour. And Mac, you've said it before, sometimes that the livers, the levers, excuse me, are a little bit longer, and that can get them in trouble quicker. Skeeter Kingsolfer, meanwhile, making his return back after being in Austin a few weeks ago. Last Cowboy standing before the break, he faces his train. Yeah, and we just got to see the cut line there. The guy's trying to make the final. Kingsolfer's on the wrong side of that line right here. He's got to get it going. But this is not a bull that bodes well for that. This bull is unridden in four tries at this level of competition. This is going to be a tough one for Skeeter. Made his debut in Winston Salem back in 2009. His train doesn't allow much time at all for King Solver. 2.45 and Skeeter's weekend is over. Yeah, and Skeeter's just behind everything. From word go, he's set down, you see all the weight is back on the pockets of his jeans. You got to get up off of your butt to have a chance against bulls like that. Stormy Wing, Storm is ready and able. There he is, feeling the effects of this altitude and the heat, but he'll be ready when it's time for the championship round. Meanwhile, Derek Kolbaba looks to have rewritten his own playbook. He is two rides away from winning back-to-back -back weekends. Here's this week's athlete profile brought to you by Cooper Tires. Derek Kolbaba looks calm, cool, and collected. Yeah, it's crazy how fast everything kind of rolls through. Uh, we just got to take it one bull at a time. Uh, we can't be thinking about what's happening next week or the next round. It's all about what the, what's the bull underneath of you and getting him rode. Uh, the guy who's the most consistent, the most consistent on those ranked bulls is the one who's going to take home the gold buckle. So uh, that's what we're focused on, and that's that's the plan. 90 points. Kolbaba clinches Uniondale. Kolbaba looked great here this weekend. That was your Cooper Tires athlete profile. And Credit Derek Kolbaba for the honesty. He said before last weekend's win, it was a talk with his father, Mac, that sort of righted the ship, reminded him of some things to pay basic attention to. Yeah, nothing like a good turn, a stern talking to from dad <laughs> to get you back in the right direction. But man, Kolbaba, and listening to that piece right there, he's got it figured out, man. That's yeah. all it's about is taking advantage of every boy. Well, he starts section two. We'll also get to check in with Ryan Dirtyder, who's been injured over the past month, and rookie of the year leader Cody Teal, who is struggling at the moment, who will face Donutso. But let's continue to talk about Derek Kolbaba. He has won three rounds over the past two weekends, tying last night with Fabiano Vieira. The bull too smooth that he is about to face is anything but easy. Yeah, and this bull can have some different days. I've seen Jess Lockwood get on him a hand of times and so is Derek I was talking with him earlier about this bull and the last time we seen Jess get on him was in Austin the bull was pretty good man really good to ride Had a, has a little bit of forward movement but nothing that Cole Baba can't handle and here's the thing with Derek this guy is so talented as we've seen the past week but we've seen it the past couple of years to make these big rides big rides what he's got to eliminate is all the over type of weekends because he's way too good for that to happen yeah, we've talked about the peaks and valleys of Kolbaba's seasons. Remember, he's only 21 years of age, made his debut at Allentown just a couple of years ago. So this officially is his second full season. But another thing that he admitted to Leah and others was that buck-off streak that he had last year in the season, 24 buck-offs in a row. This season, he's had a couple buck-off streaks that have coupled or have come close to 20, Mac, and he mentioned it was hard for him to forget about that. Kolbaba should never buck-off more than one in a row. He's that good a rider. If he rides too smooth, he'll only be the second man to do it. Derek Kolbaba has got it all going on. A bull that has given other men fits. He makes the eight. And he gets a second score. If it's more than 84 and a half, he'll move back into that number one spot. I think he'll be more. That, that was a really, really good ride. Shouldn't take the lead in the round, but that was a tough bull to get by. Cole Baba did a lot of good stuff in this ride, especially when the bull went back to the left right here. You watch how he's wanting to get him ran to the inside, how he holds weights, and the bull's really going to jump forward. 
We're being told they're taking a look at this now for time, and this would be catastrophic. Oh, he's still got his hands he's in the there, man. Sorry to sound like a cheerleader, but come on, judges. Where's your sense of the dramatic? Derek Kolbaba, at least from our vantage point, looks to have a second qualified ride. We're scoring him, Craig. That was a good ride, man. <laughs> Way from his hand, though. This is good. Picture perfect. And then right here into his hand. Watch how he wants to drop to the inside a little bit. He holds, comes out, handles this big jump forward. Good stuff. He is going to get a second score, and he's with Leah. What happened at the end of that eight? Oh, man, that little boy, he was pretty wild there. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of direction change. I just really tried to stay square and, and stay on my legs. and. We had grid out there at the end. Grid he did, Craig. And he is in contention for a back-to-back -back winning weekend because he gets 85 and three quarters and moves into sole number one position. Meanwhile, Ryan Dirtyder, we last saw him in Springfield due to that right hip injury. He's still trying to get a qualified ride this weekend. He faces strutting stuff. Yeah, this is a bull. It's bumped him off before. This is actually a classic bull. And we haven't seen guys Make it past two seconds on this bull. I mean, this is, bull is a real handful right here. And that's one of the reasons why this strutting stuff doesn't wait for the gate to swing open. Ryan Dirtyder now being helped. You can see Skeeter Kingsolver right there in the darker blue shirt holding on to his vest, trying to keep him safe. And Mac, go back to when you were riding in a bull acted up like that. What was your first inclination to do once you reset? Get out of there and go home. <laughs> That's much I talked myself about getting to reset. Yeah, the boy I didn't really think was just rare up a little bit in the front. He wasn't trying to come over. He didn't try and get his legs up over there. And the main thing was he didn't follow it up with a lot of kick in there. That's when it gets dangerous when they want to jam you up in the front of the shoot. I think this bull will be okay. You see they're getting the rope over him right there. That way when he rears up, he feels that. He'll go back down and quit trying. You mentioned how quickly this bull has taken care of business against all of the riders he's faced. When Dirtyder faced him back in Thackerville during the summer, 1.88 seconds just blew him off of his back. Yeah, and not that he's been around a lot, but the few times that he has, that's been the outcome of this bull. So Dirtyder got to get in the game right here, look for the bull to go to the right, right here close with a lot of intensity. We hinted at Derek Kolbaba's times where he has trouble with consistency. Ryan Dirtyder is another young man who when he rides and rides well, well, case in point, he won last year's World Finals event title, but then he has weeks upon weeks where he can't seem to make eight seconds. Go on, Ryan. Go on. Go on. And Strutton Stuff does not make it on Dirty Dirt today. Well, Dirty Dirt did ride him past the two seconds, but that is a rank bull right there, man. I mean, a really tough bull. Watch the amount of up and down he's got right here. Big time front end, back under himself a little bit. And then he's going to go forward, have some belly roll. That's a hard bull to get by, especially for a left-handed guy. Still only three qualified rides in the round. The best so far, Stormy Wing with a whopping 88 and three quarters. Derek Kolbaba does lead the event with his two bull total. Cody Teal just hoping to get on the board. And I mentioned when we showed the section lineup a while ago, Mac, about how he has been struggling. He does lead the rookie of the year standings. This is his first year on tour, but we should remind everybody, this is a former PRC world champion, a guy that has won the NFR a couple times, a guy that also has shown very good rides throughout his career, but has struggled lately. Yeah, this is a good chance for Teal to get it going against the Nutso right here. Wants to hang up. Hey, hey, the nuts are. Cody Teal earned that one and should probably get extra points for the getaway. Lands on his feet, scampers to safety, and he'll get a score. I love the effort that he puts out right here. You know, you could hear Shorty in that right saying he's wanting to hang up because he's trying to whip him down over his shoulder. Right here, it's going to come again right there. He just fights through it and does not give up on his ride. If you're Cody Till, that's how you get things going back in the right direction with a tremendous amount of grit. 
83 and a half, and it has been a while since he's strung together some scores, so he'll look, if he can get to the championship round, to do that here this weekend. Meanwhile, Claudio Montagna Jr., the man that is trailing him in the Rookie of the Year standings, also bucked off in round one. Here he faces mixed emotions. Well, you said he's trailing Teal, and I think this guy has all the ability in the world. This guy can really, really ride good. But again, I, I think he's underachieved a little bit the past month or two of the season here. This guy is riding better than what he was showing. Mixed emotions may have been sending a mixed message or Montagna Jr. just made it look oh so easy. Man, I think that bull is borderline a re-ride. Starts out okay right here and you know, and then he's just round and round. Doesn't really kick a whole lot. 81, I mean, he got everything he could out of the bull. He rode him in good shape, but just not much of a bull right there. That 81 is gonna leave him in 14th overall. So a slim chance to make it back on one, but a lot more riders to go still here in Colorado Springs. Next up is the Australian Lachlan Richardson, who himself has been Basically, he can't even buy a ride since he's returned from injury. He is 0 for 13 since he came back in Tulsa. Here he faces carbon copy. I never give up on Lachlan, though. Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on! I think Lachlan Richardson would like to take carbon copy back to the mimeograph machine because if every bull looked like that, he'd have a career on these. Now that was, that's how you get every point out of just a really nice bull. He's not going to be a huge score because the bull was so nice, but you're definitely going to see the rider being marked way over top of the bull because as soon as this bull gets into the spin, watch what Lachlan does with his outside leg, spurring up the side of the bull. He's showing the judges, hey, I am in complete and utter control right here. And Richardson's been using some good form to win some lower tier events. That is his first qualified ride since his return to the Built Ford Tough Series, 83 and three quarters. So far this weekend, no one has been better than Derek Kolbaba, last week's winner in New York, hoping to go back to back. So far, he's in the perfect position. Bad Beagle brings some bite of his own. He's been running off leash all season and no one's been able to collar him for eight seconds. The culmination of our 27th season is near. PBR Built for Tough World Finals returns to T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, November 1st through November 5th. Single date tickets are now on sale. Call PBR Customer Service at 800-732-1727 to lock in your seats today. Six qualified rides in the round. Derek Kolbaba, your overall leader. Stormy Wing with the best ride in round number two. 15 will make it here on Championship Sunday to our championship round. Some are gonna get in based on one, but the event winner is definitely gonna need at least two. It's Claudio Montagna Jr. who had a ride a moment ago, who is on the bubble. Another Brazilian with his chance, Ramon de Lima. Got a score in round number one, Mac, 82 and three quarters. He put together a good weekend last week in New York where he made the championship round. Second time he's done that this season. He's trying to make his third championship round with a score on Game Changer. Yeah, and you keep putting yourself in those posi positions, making the championship round, because that's the only way to get accustomed to those to that caliber of bull is to see him day in and day out, week in, week out. Shorty, Mac brings up a great point, which you just cannot fake the experience of getting to face these top-level bulls. No, that's it. You know, it, it's it's similar. You know, when you when when somebody comes out of college uh, into professional uh, uh, baseball or something, the speed of the game is so much faster. And unless you're getting on them constantly, it's just the, the speed of the, the speed just gets by you. And I think. The more you can get on these ranked bulls, the better you get in tap with them. And when you get in tune with them, then the rest of them are all, all easy. Well, and Mac, I think that's one of the things, too, that the Brazilians admit is the type of bull down in Brazil is very different than these. You read my mind, man, because that not only do they have the courage to this level of bull, but where they grew up getting on them, they're a totally different breed and type of bull. They're a lot slower, spend more time in the air. Do not adjust your television. I'm not sure how Ramon De Lima did it. 
but he was able to come back in time and stay a top game changer, and it looks like he's going to get a second score. Two things played into that. Right here, this bull gets close, hits his head, has to hesitate just a second. That lets him get back in the game, but there is no substitute for effort, and that was all effort right there, man. That guy just did not give up. 78 points, and Shorty, are you seeing a flag? Did he get an opportunity for a re-ride? Yes, he does have a re-ride option. And now we're going to see. It looks as though he's, he's going to take it. He is. And there we go. So Ramon DeLima somewhat going against the grain, it seems, for what we often see the Brazilians do as a whole. He will come back and face another bull, even though he had that second qualified score. He's trying to win something. Good to see first. That. Exactly, Rubens Barbosa, meanwhile, was getting the Brazilians fired up in the locker room beforehand. He's been close on a lot of them, Mac, but he is only one for his last 28 when you take that weekend in Springfield out of it. He faces Penthouse. Yeah, and I was talking to Rubens earlier. He didn't know a lot about this bull. I think he should be to the right, the bull, and if that's the case, if the bull sticks to that, Rubens has got a big chance against him. Rubens is really tough that direction. We often mention and somewhat kid about the size of his bicep, his right arm. And there it is right there. And that's why he's so good to the right, is because he can pick up on his rope, use that big bicep, and anchor himself to the back of these bulls. This 33-year-old made his debut back in Billings in 2011. That same year was the Brazilian Iron Cowboy champion. It took him until 2015 for his first, first Bill Ford Tuck Series win, and that was right here in Colorado Springs. Some extra prep against Penthouse. Uh, happened here. Might get a little in interesting. Hey, hey! Just not enough. And the trend continues as Penthouse sends Barbosa to the ground floor without a score. When you watch this, Rubens has been talking about these guys that are gritty and putting out effort. Nobody tries any harder than Rubens. But when you get leaned back this far and you watch as this ride progresses where this little guy's head goes, he's got no sight line of this bull. I mean, he's already picked up. We're, on, we're only in two or three seconds. He's reared completely back. I mean, he's going for it with everything that he's got, trying to get to the inside, back of that spin, but you can't last for that long. You can't rely on just those big, huge Hail Mary moves for that long. He was doing it from two seconds on. I saw you go to the Telestrator. I thought you were going to start drawing his sight lines toward the ceiling. Well, I was going to, and then I thought better of it because <laughs> it was pretty easy to see the whole pretty time. Pretty easy to see where his eyes were pointing. Meanwhile, we bring back the bubble graphic with good reason because Cody Campbell is right there trying to crack into the top 35. Going into this round, he is only three points out of that qualifying position for the finals. Great honor for these men to make it to the world finals. We talk a lot about the gold buckle. And for the guys that are the best, certainly that is the goal. But for a lot of other guys, including Cody Campbell, just making it is an accomplishment. Here he faces Shelly's gangster. Well, just making it's a huge accomplishment, but it can also be very lucrative for you. You know, you're looking at 35,000 each go around, you got a chance to win. 300,000 to win the average title there. So these guys could have a career best week at the PBR World Finals. Hey, hey, hey! Shelly's gangster throws Campbell down, and if we see this again, Mac, I want you to circle his right shoulder. He wears a brace and has for years on that right shoulder. That's his riding arm, and he never gets on a bull without it because he has popped that shoulder out so much, and he was telling me earlier, he just seems to always land on it. Yeah, he's had a hard time with it. This is a really good bull. You watch, he missed the front end there a little bit, and then this jump here, the bull's gonna make him pay for it, and his hand hangs just long enough in his bull rope that he takes all the momentum, drives him into the ground. He's never had problems, interestingly enough, with the free arm shoulder, which a lot of guys tend to. It's always been that right side, that right arm. And I think that's why you've seen him be able to just keep grinding his way through season after season. Cody Campbell finishes his weekend of work, and we move on to Denner Barbosa. 
He made his debut here in the Built for Tough series at last year's World Finals. He was the international invite from Brazil. This is his first full season. He has done quite well. He's already got a score. Let's see what he can do against Snoop Dogg. Well, and just stay on the theme of bad shoulders because this guy's got a bad one on his free arm. And you're going to see the amount of balance that this guy has because he doesn't use his free arm just a whole lot. He does it all with balance and technique. A lot like Fabiano Vieira, who we're going to see a little bit later on. Not many outs for this ball at this level. Wanting him off of his left leg is full. Looks like he's kind of gotten in his starting blocks, wanting to get set there. Dinner <laughs> Barbosa is now two for two. And he gets to sing his own song aboard Snoop Dogg. Yeah, nice ride right there. Good bull, Snoop Dogg. What's the way how this guy just floats up on top of the bull? You never see him. You see his feet are moving the entire time. He just lets the bull pull him to wherever he's going. That's He gets a little bit to the inside at the whistle, but too little too late for the bull here. Barbosa does a good job of following the bulls wherever they go. He doesn't try to just clamp down and, and out-muscle the bull. 82 and three quarters, and that 166 total slots him behind Colbaba and Ring. Another good weekend for Denner Barbosa. This is Emilio Hacende who put together back-to-back -back great weekends in Austin and Springfield. With one for two last week, trying to get his first score here. He faces Vegas Lights. Watch out. We've seen for a few weeks this month, and what a great job of staying with Vegas Lights, and that should be worth a lot. Yeah, that was a really good bull. Great job by Emilio, not giving up on his ride. And then at the end, I hope we get to watch the work the bullfighters did, because Emilio, he's hustling, he's trying here, his feet are bouncing on him. And, and he doesn't get to get off the way he wants to. He goes to the inside of the spin. That puts a lot of pressure on Shorty and the guys right here. And they do an outstanding job of getting Emilio out of harm's way right here. Shorty, Jesse, and Frank, they always talk about that triangle protection. It collapses right there, allows Emilio to get away. 85 and a half for the effort. That's good enough to move him into a tie for ninth. Kaiki Pacheco likes to move and act methodically and quietly. But you can bet losing the world number one ranking doesn't sit well with him. He can get it back today. I drew a bull they say can't be rode. This week on Bullfighting 101, presented by Matador Jerky, we're talking round and round. We always want to work in a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. The reason is with that triangle, if you're working in a, in a circle, you're always coming back to your partners where they can help you. You can see Jesse does a great job right there. Leads him around till that bull's eye hits Frank, peels him off of Jesse. I step back to his eye right there. Boom, got his attention, draw him off of Jesse. I got out of there enough. He went back to Jesse, so we had him. We had him. We had the angles on him, and he knew he was beat. On this bull, he's going to go out there and turn back to the left, which is in a counterclockwise rotation. You can see that triangle working in the same direction. Always moving in a circle, trying to get that bull, just keeping him off his, off his uh, strong strength, which is going forward. If we can keep him bent, keep him in that circular motion, we can keep an a advantage over him. Here we've got Mike Lee going counterclockwise on a bull round and round. We're trying to change this bull's direction so Mike can get off into his hand. His hand comes out of the rope and he's really lost control at this point. However, we've got a little bit of room to work. We keep that triangle in motion, keep the bull moving around and around, and you know, we just take turns passing the bull from, from one onto the next. Teamwork. Here's our triangle going counterclockwise. Mike Lee's hand comes out of the rope and we don't know where he's gonna land exactly, but with that triangle moving in a circular direction, somebody's gonna have a shot to save him. 
Shorty, looks like you've been reading the format again. That's exactly what you guys just did with Emilio. Absolutely. Round and round, Craig. Don't fall down. That's the rules of the game there. But, uh, you know, think about it. These bulls got four legs. We got two. They can outrun us in a straight line all day long, but we can outmaneuver them in a tight circle. See, and when I saw that on the format, I thought you guys were going to sing the old rat classic from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I don't know that one, Greg. You're, you're going to have to lead the way. <laughs> no, 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 not me. Maybe we can get Leah a bit later on. Silvano Elvis isn't a very good singer either, but he's a darn good bull rider. Cadillac Jack is his foe in this round, and Mac, he could use a ride. Yeah, and this is a good chance for him to get one right here, I think. Bull should be into his hand. Silvano is still more than capable. Do not forget. This is one of the three-time, one of only two three-time world champions that the PBR has ever seen, the first back-to-back -back ever. And the guy, he can still ride. We'll go back to what you said he shared with you in Florida. Well, let's watch the ride first. Can he get his first Florida weekend on Cadillac Jack? And it's not going to happen, which, Mac, leads me into the point I wanted you to make, is when you were at the IMG Academy, you got to visit with Silvano, and I think his biggest hurdle is sometimes he forgets he's a three-time PBR world champion. Yeah, you know, and, and we always talk about how a guy's going to have to come off of an injury. Silvano had to come back from a big injury here a year or two ago, and, and he still worries about that. You start thinking about getting hurt. And the most important thing for Silvano is when he's here, to be completely at the bull riding in that event. That was a good bull. He started him pretty good. Just got stuck to the inside, and that's tough to come out of when a bull's spinning into your hand. Next up, we've got Luciano De Castro, another young Brazilian who made his debut this season and is pushing for that Rookie of the Year title. He's had some very good results over the past few months when he's been here. Four top tens. He was 11th last weekend. This would be his first score, though. He faces Bolo. Uh, this guy come on around at pretty much the exact same time as Claudio Montaigne Jr. And I thought they were both really, really talented guys. And Luciano, he's been doing some great things this season. I think next year, this guy is going to be in the discussion about a world championship. I think he's that good. Bolo is 24 and 1 in his career. Has been a buzzsaw through almost every rider he has faced. Luciano taking a little bit extra. And the bull does his job. Luciano goes down, and it's an 0 for 2 weekend for the Brazil. The style of rope that the guys from Brazil use, and a lot of American riders also use them, but really the Brazilian guys, their ropes are pretty stiff, the handles, and that's why they're so good on bulls into their hand because they can set down under their rope and pick up on it. Now, away from your hand, your move is different. When the front end comes up, you have got to meet it. Once Luciano gets that figured out, that he can't just cut bulls off around the corner and he's got to get up to the front end, this guy's going to be hard to stop. Next in the shoots, one of our marquee men. Former world number one, Kaiki Pacheco, the bridesmaid, the past two seasons overall, second in the final world standings. He has ridden only four of his last 17 bulls. Shorty, are you surprised by that? Yeah, you know, this is this is the guy that is, is just so fat, so talented. I, I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, but you know, that's that's part of bull riding. You're gonna go through streaks like that. You're gonna have the you know the rivers or the, the peaks and the valleys. And uh, he's just he's in a valley right now and he's gotta find a way to that peak and I don't know how he's gotta do it, but somehow he's got to turn things around. Valley or hit himself right there. I have to figure in, man, it's, it's raining. The it's raining re ride flags out there right now. So Pacheco, after flashbang, doesn't do his job, is going to get another one. Yeah, and, and you can see it really clearly. Bull comes out backwards right here. Now he's going to hit his hip, and that's enough for the re ride. Good call by the judges, but you watch how much he's setting down. It'll be really important on his rewrite. If it's a bull that goes away from his hand, if Pacheco sets down like that, that bull will bust him off. He's got to get off of his butt away from his hand. And Kaiki desperately needs a mid 80 score to make it back on one. We actually only have three guys that are a perfect two for two, but this next man has a chance to add his name to his list. 
the Queenslander, Sonny Shafirius, got his first qualified ride last night. 86 points aboard American Gangster. Here he goes up against the Reaper. Yeah, made a really good ride on American Gangster. Hey, it, it, it makes you spin. Hey, Sonny can ride. You see him make that kind of ride. I'll start stacking those together. Winner, eight year old, has got a rodeo background. That was a nice ride right there. Complete and under control. That's how you do it away from your hand. 85 points, and that will slot him in third overall. Never any question throughout the course of this ride. If we stop it just anywhere, look at this. Now, this is good stuff. Check out the Bulls front end. He's up over. You hear me talk about getting off your butt? That's how you do it. All the weights right here. My favorite part. Look where his sight line is, right down the barrel. Good stuff for Sonny. Coming into the weekend, he had been 0 for 12. He's picking up where he needs to. He's two for two, and he's a leader. We talked before the show started, and you said you got a monkey off your back in round number one. How'd that help? Yeah, that helped a lot, yeah. Uh, have to get uh, a good one in the short and uh, see what happens at the end of the day. And you might want to work off on getting on the ground and running. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not real good on me back. Greg. <laughs> Dakota Butter. Gets his chance for a first score this weekend. The Canadian bucked off Goose Jack in round one. But in this round, it was as if Canadian fast lane went in slow motion and just delayed the inevitable for Butter. He's off at three and a half. Yeah, when we watch this back, watch when his inside foot comes up. And here's the thing with Dakota. Every time when he keeps his back straight, he can make the whistle. When he gets a hump in his back like he's got this entire time, that takes all the weight off of your feet. That's why his foot is going to come up and, and, and want to come out of the bull. you got to keep your back straight. If you keep your back straight, you don't need spurs. Spurs are for just to buy you another chance from time to time. Get your back straight, drive the weight down your legs. Butter goes 0 for 2 in Colorado Springs. And becomes the latest to become a spectator. But at the top end of the scoreboard, we've got Kolbaba, Wing, Shafirius, and Denner Barbosa, all perfect here in Colorado. Tuesday night at 9 Eastern, join our panel of college football experts in the studio as they tackle the stories from this week's best matchups around the nation. It's Inside College Football, presented by Sleep Number, on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Nine qualified rides in round number two. Four men have used those rides to stay a perfect two for two. We're trying to fill up our top 15 for the championship round. And at the moment, that 15th spot, Ramon DeLima. The goal for everyone else to ride, 82 and three quarters, including 2004 PBR World Champ Mike Lee. For more, let's check in with Leah. This cowboy came onto the scene back in 2002, Craig. He was the first cowboy to win both the PBR World Finals and the World Championship that year in 2004, which you mentioned. At 34 years old, I asked him before the event started, how long do you have in this sport? And he said, you know, Leah, I love my fans. I love what I do. And as long as I can keep inspiring and I get to sign my autograph on people and put something inspirational, he says, I want to keep going. And then he said, maybe 39 or 40. Isn't that when Adriana retired? I thought maybe a little earlier. <laughs> well, for Mike Lee, you bring up some great points, which is that he does have such a great fan base. He does so much work every week with not just charities, but with the fans that are here. And his longtime fans also, I think, Mac, love that victory lap. But those victory laps have been few and far between over the past couple seasons. Yeah, and as bad as I would like to get to see one of them right here, I don't know that we're going to get to. This is a tough, tough bull to get by. Round to the left. Now, this is into Mike Lee's hand, so I, I like his chance with that. But if he gets a little bit too far to the inside, this bull will hollow out and drop him all the way in. This is a tough bull to get by. Is it? He faces whose jacket, by the way. This bull is unridden in 10 outs in his career. He 
He got pulled to the inside. And whose jacket gets to notch the win just over five seconds? Yeah, it's a tough old bull. Built uphill, everything's moving away from you. He wants you back. It's tough to get by because you gotta make big moves to keep up with him. But then when you get there, he, he just moves forward and hollows out, wants to drop you to the inside. It's a tough bull for Mike Lee to get by. I was gonna ask you though, what do you think is the easiest scene for, for someone that doesn't know much about bull riding? Is it the fact that he can't, well, we'll get back to that another time. I just wanna go to now Alex Marsilio, who made his debut in Sioux Falls earlier this year. This is only his fifth event on tour. He's looking for a second score. <laughs> Red Bandana brings the speed, and Marsilio looked as though he was going to be able to keep up, but this young man is riding incredibly well at all levels. Yeah, and, and that results in a zero, but there's a lot of good stuff in that ride. He started a great ride, and talk about bull power. This is a bull you see a lot of times in the championship round. I mean, he starts him really good away from his hand. He's getting around the corners really good. Makes a little bit big of a move with his free arm maybe and gets gets to the outside and then talk about it. This bull's a championship round caliber bull. He's going to finish it. Marsilio with a definite chance to come back in the championship round. Currently 11th with his 85 from round number one. Visiting there with Rubens Barbosa. Going through the ride, and that was Eduardo Aparecido, the number one bull rider in the world, getting ready as well. This is Fabiano Vieira. Keep in mind, he's been out since Thackerville wow. when he had that horrible record. Let's take you back to that ride in round number one. This is the wreck first in Thackerville. Little flat spinner gets him to the inside, hits him, steps all over him. Yeah. Leah mentioned that jaw being wired shut didn't seem to affect him much because this is what he did last night in round one. Yeah, this is how you like to come back to competition right here. Into your hand, nobody's any tougher than Fabiano. His seesaw feast for family season. Oh, Joe Blow looked to throw a knockout punch. But Fabiano's able to get up, but in Yin, this guy takes a beating, it seems, almost every time he leaves the shoot. Another really ranked bull right there in Joe Blow. This is another championship round caliber bull. This is as far as I've seen anybody ride him, and he is having a day. Up and down, around to the left. Big jump forward right there. That's what jerks him down. That's a handful. We've talked about a couple riders and their shoulder problems already. The poster boy of shoulder problems is Fabiano Vieta. He has chosen never to get them operated on. Both shoulders have given him trouble throughout his career. And he's hoping he can answer the call in the championship round. Meanwhile, Troy Wilkinson came close in round number one. Six plus seconds, here he faces Pyle Grant. He's got a good one right here. Finish this one off, he'll make the championship round. And looked as though Troy Wilkinson's patience would pay off. However, even though the clock hit eight, Mac, I think he's going to get called for a touch. Yeah, I think they're going to review it. And, you know, we all seen it in real time. When they slow it down, I think they'll for sure see it. And here's the thing, and I said it right as he was leaving the shoot. Finish this one. Troy can really ride. <laughs> you could see it right there, man. I mean, he was just making a flawless ride. And... You know, sometimes you just got to talk about it with Lockwood a little bit, getting a little too complacent. Sometimes bull riding does get easy. When you're in the right place, it's easy. Just sit there and finish it off, man. Get a little bit, just get a little bit more grit to you and just finish it. You don't have to move uh, unless the bull does something right there. Bad gum, I hate to see that for him because he just rode the bull dead easy. So this is, again, remember, they're looking for that touch, and as Mac just pointed out, it happened right around 6.8 seconds. Another angle. Judges, well, from that angle, it's going to be impossible to see. They'll switch, of course, though, to another camera. You know, and he was a little bit to the inside, but not so much that you need to panic and come clear across the bull's neck like that. Troy's top result this season was Albuquerque back in the spring where he was sixth overall. 
He was one for three, making the championship round, and actually was up against Joe Blow in the championship round, that bull that we just saw last week. Yeah, right there's your contact on it. No score is officially what will happen in the touch again, 6.78 seconds. So what could have been a well-placed qualified ride becomes a missed opportunity for the Australian. Meanwhile, Derek Kolbaba, guys are trying to chip away at his top spot, but he is still a point and a half ahead of Stormy Wing and is the bad boy more lead dog. Coming up, Eduardo Aparecido. Go, 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 Eduardo! He is this year's Iron Cowboy! Eduardo Aparecido has cut the deficit to the world number one. He is your winner of the 15-15 bucking battle here in Thackerville. Aparecido answers right here in a big way. As the PBR rides on from Colorado. The first PBR Global Cup is going to be held next month in Edmonton, Canada. Riders from five countries are going to compete in this exciting new international event. And tickets, of course, are on sale now. You can call PBR Customer Service at 800-732-1727 to lock in your seats today. A lot of familiar names, not just amongst the riders, but look at some of those coaches right there. Michael Gaffney will be coaching the Mexican team. Adriano Marias, the Australian team. And my broadcast partner this weekend, none other than two-time PBR world champ, Justin McBride, will coach the U.S. squad. What are you looking for most out of your riders? I'm just, I'm just wanting to get them to the event healthy. <laughs> it's coming right off of the world finals. It's going to be a big deal to put together a healthy team. And we might see some shuffling in those names for the Global Cup, just like we might see some shuffling in our championship round qualifiers. Next to go, world number one, Eduardo Aparecido. He regained that world number one ranking last week in Uniondale, where he went three for three and finished third overall. And, you know, we talked about it last week, Mac, or at least I did with Ty. And, you know, I this, this idea of confidence, I think when you apply it to Eduardo, you just need look no further. I mean, this is a year where he finally thinks he can win. Yeah, and this is a guy that lets the riding do his talking, you know. He, he's not real outspoken about how good or how bad or anything like that he's doing. He just gets on week in, week out, makes good rides, and, and he's been doing it for a while. But this season, he's really started stringing it together. And, I wholeheartedly believe that this guy could be the world champion at the end of the year. He's looking for a second score. He faces lifting lines. Let's check in with Liam. As he maneuvers back into that number one spot that you mentioned, Craig, he's doing so by trying not to think about the world title. So what that means is that midweek, he spends time with his buddies, team roping, doing ranch work, anything but thinking about bull riding, except Emilio Resende is helping him in the shoot. Hey, they've been training during the week, outdoor, super hot conditions, trying to work up a sweat, trying to deal with the outdoor elements because he says that having that experience helps transfer to this arena and make it just a little bit easier. Hey, sorry, to Leah's point just about having fun and staying relaxed, if you go into the locker room beforehand, as you know, all the Brazilians as a group tend to keep it light and keep the fun. Absolutely, you know, Craig, you have to do that in my opinion. If you're not having fun here, why are you here? You know, you gotta love your job. This is a dangerous sport. It's something that you, you know, you never know. This could be your last bull. So if you're not loving what you're doing, you shouldn't be here. And if you can have fun, your job's gonna be that much easier. This is a guy though that I, I really like watching this guy right. He's real quiet, he's real humble, but I like you guys brought the, the case of confidence up because deep down inside, you better believe that you're the best in the world. Well, confident or not, this is a bull that he has had problems with in the past. They had faced twice before. The longest a Parasito had lasted was 4.07. So he goes longer. But obviously, Mac, he doesn't care about that. He won it all eight. Yeah, and Lifting Lives has enough forward movement to him after every jump. He's going to go forward. You see how Eduardo is missing the front end every time. He's back. His head is straight up in the air, man. He's got no side of the bull. As he comes down, he's trying to find him, but he never gets back to the front. He never found the front end one time. It was a really good job to make it that far with missing the front ends as many times as he did. He was third in round one. He still sits in the top ten. This is Ramon DeLima. 
That was his re-ride aboard Banana. And it's not going to be a second score. He'll have to settle for 82 and three quarters for the weekend. And it won't be enough to get him into the chip. Oh, it might be. He's in 15. Uh, he's still got a shot. Banana was like letting go of a balloon you just aired up. Just all over the place. Wants to turn back right there. Gets too close. Now takes off down in front of the chutes. Ramon's just trying to track him around. Because <laughs> this bull cannot make up his mind what he wants to do. For DeLima. A golden opportunity slips through his fingers, and he'll have to hope for some help sitting in that 15th and final position for the championship round. Our next guy is hoping to knock him out because he needs a score after accepting his re-ride and then bucking off Rebel Yell in round number one. Our defending PBR world champ who gets an ovation from the crowd. Let's send you back, though, to last night. This was Garber's ghost match where he then chose the rewrite option. Yeah, not many guys would have got the rewrite option because they wouldn't have rode him through all of that stuff. And then Rebel Yell just sets him up, drops him to the inside. Davis not happy about that performance. Here's the thing, fire and smoke, lots of forward movement. Buck Davis off before. He's got to chew this bull up around to the left. Has bucked him off emphatically before. <laughs> boy, oh boy, let's rewind the tape and show everybody how much Cooper Davis wants to go back to back with these world titles. Fire and Smoke had him not once, not twice, but it looked like three separate times. He never had him. That right, <laughs> hey, here's the thing, man. This is understanding the mechanics of bull riding. It looks like, yeah, he's gonna rock him up too far right there, but he sets his foot back down, but he never gives up on the front end. You can see this bull, how far forward he's going every time. That's exactly the way you have to do it if you're gonna get by a bull like that. Cooper Davis knows bull riding. He's been here. And this time around, what changed? I stayed on. <laughs> he threw me off three times previously, and I stayed forward this time to stay on. Craig. We quickly transition. To Kaiki Bisheko, his re-ride. Great opportunity against high test. Huge opportunity right here to be in the high 80s on high test. Around to the left, though. This bull, though, not a lot of big break over kick. This is a great bull to ride. Bisheko's on point. He gets his eight seconds. Now where will the judges place him? Cooper Davis was just 85 and three quarters. That tied him with eight. You have to figure Pacheco is gonna be right around that number as well. 86 points. Yeah, Pacheco has the better bull right there, especially the better bull to ride. And he just does a great job of riding the bull. You can see he's never in any uh, danger of being too far to one side or the other, rides him right in the middle. That was a nice ride by Pacheco. Well, and the good news for Kaiki is that 86 points puts him in third in the round, and these round points really start to add up. Stormy Wings still leading the round at 88 and three quarters, but we'll see Pacheco again as he visits with his mentor, three-time PBR world champ, Silvano Alves. Few more men to go until that championship round is set. Derek Kolbaba looks to almost have the lock on that number one pick. Can he win back-to-back -back events? Tomorrow at 6 Eastern, our roster of former pro quarterbacks will break down week four in the NFL and get you inside the minds of the biggest stars in football. It's NFL Monday QB, delivered by FedEx, only on CBS Sports Network. Just got word that Fabiano Vieira will not be able to answer the bell in the championship round, so that means everything shifts down one, which places Cody Teal in that bubble position. The mark for everyone else to go, 83 and a half points. And Mac, we are down to our final three riders. They all need a score. They all can get a score. Cody Teal walking back into sports medicine to make sure everything's good to go. If he gets a chance, you can see Cody Campbell way off in the 
back round with the ice on that shoulder, that right shoulder that we keep mentioning. Cody Rodeo Tyler, by the way, is next up. He bucked off Uncle Tink, made it to six seconds and change, which is a good job against that bull in round one. Here in round two, he faces Big City. Yeah, and this is a, this is a good matchup for him. And here's the thing with, with the next three guys. They've all drawn bulls that give them a great shot to make the championship round. And, and I was talking to Gage Gay, who will be coming up here in a minute, about this right before the event started. You cannot give up on your weekend, man. You've got to fix what went wrong and get right back in the game because you still got a great shot to make the championship round. Do you think that idea of, of either being able to... Well, let's watch Cody one more time. That is hard to watch. An awkward buck off for Cody Rodeo Tyler in a very unenviable position, and Big City gives him a parting gift. Yeah, a little out of time with this bull, and up over the shoulder, and then check this out, man. Looks like both feet, and they just split him. It doesn't get any closer than that. Wow, could have been much worse, as many of our longtime fans can attest. Which leaves two men trying to work their way into this championship round. Gage Gay bucked off bad idea 24 hours ago. That lasted five seconds. Here he faces hard candy. Before he goes, let's send it to Lee. You may recognize Gage Gay in the shoot having some problems in recent events. And I talked to him about what's been going on. He said it's kind of bad luck. He's been getting on some of these bulls that may be a bit rambunctious. But one of the things that stood out was that last weekend, Frank Newsom talked to him about cowboying up in there a little bit, protecting himself, being able to get out. He says, so he's working on a few things, particularly lifting his knees when he's in the shoot and he starts getting into problems. And I immediately said, oh, Justin McBride style. And he said, yes. Hey, whatever it takes in there. But you know, to Frank's point, you do have to, man. You have got to get tough and, and take care of yourself in the bucket shoot. And the lift and the knees thing, that's just so they can't once they do go to bucket in there and, and try to tear the shoot apart, just pick up your knees and then they can't scrape up your ankles and, and bust you up like that. So you gotta take care of yourself. And, and here's the thing for Gage Gay, I think, Craig. This guy's got a lot of ability. No question, he can really ride, but he's got to finish him. You talk about it comes down in round one, five seconds. How many times do we see this guy make high 80 point rides for seven seconds? A lot, too many. He's got to finish that ride. And when he starts doing that, you're gonna see him scream to the top of the world stands. Another young rider, even though we don't mention it often, he's 23 years of age. The North Carolina Cowboy made his debut a few years ago at last Cowboy standing. Hard candies the ball. Gage Gay gets it done. Lands on his feet. Meanwhile, hard candy with a little extra effort, but that should be good enough to get Gage Gay back. It is 86 and a half. Yeah, extra effort from the bull. There was a lot of extra effort from Gage Gay right around the first two, three rounds right there. He was about to be 90 on that bull. Then he kind of goes forward and, and eases off of it. The intensity goes down a little bit. But that was a great job by Gay. That's what I'm talking about, finishing right there, whatever it takes. His head snaps up. He gets it back down, finds the bull again. Really good job by Gage. Needed it. Got the job done. 86 and a half moves him all the way up to seventh overall. He will have a great pick in the draft. And that leaves Marco Agusi. He's the last rider in round two. He faces Pill Pusher. Same thing, man. Here's a chance. You know you're going to make the championship. If he gets by this bull, he's going to make the championship round on him. No question. Got Emilio Hasende there holding on to the vest. Trying to keep him safe. Last minute instructions being shouted from his fellow Brazilian. Go! Go. Right now, Phil Pusher. This bull here is pretty mean, guys. Keep it up. Not touch the bull or the ground before the eight seconds. 
in fantastic position, Mac, for about six and three quarter seconds. Yeah, and, and I think he's going to get this one. That's just what I'm going with because he really needs <laughs> a long time, man. Really great shape for the first half of the ride. Now you can see he starts getting set down. When you set down like that into your hand and have to make these big moves, it puts a lot of pressure on your riding hand. It gets tough to hang on to that bull rope because you're taking the full force and that's a 1,700 pound bull. And you are right, partner, no question whatsoever. We'll see how much the judges deduct though for going off to the side a little bit at the end. And they give him 85 points. So Marco earns his way into the championship round, and his 85 is good enough to tie him with his compatriot, Mar Alex Marsilio. With round two complete, we know our 15 moving on. Let's show you the top four, a perfect two for two. Derek Mobaba will have first pick in the draft and a chance to close out Colorado Springs the way he did Uniondale. That last man to get in, been a while, but it's good to see Joao Ricardo Vieta back in our championship round. The PBR Built Ford Tough Series on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Schick Extreme 3. Schick Extreme 3 has three flexible blades that adapt to contours. Welcome back to Colorado Springs. We have made it to the championship round here on Championship Sunday. Joao Ricardo Vieira was left with Hammer it again, but look at that matchup. Defending PBR World Champ Cooper Davis is gonna face Pearl Harbor. And then when you get down to the final pairing, Derek Kolbaba with his first pick chose Sweet Pros Bruiser. Hello again, everybody, alongside two-time PBR world champion Justin McBride. I am Craig Hummer. Mac, we just showed everybody high-flying, high-potential matchups in this championship round. Absolutely, and if you're a fan of the Bulls, well, you're in for a treat <laughs> because they do not get any better than this championship round. But I love the matchup with Cole Baba and Bruiser. You're looking at probably the hottest rider right now mm -hmm. on the tour and Derek Kolbaba trying to win a world championship and he's going to match up against the front runner to win the bull of the year right now. Bruiser, they've done it before in Oklahoma City for huge numbers. Kolbaba has got to do it again. This is going to be a dog fight for eight seconds. Well, when they danced in Oklahoma City, as we just showed you, worth 92 points. If he gets a score like that, you can bet on it. Derek Kolbaba will win back-to-back -back weekends, but most importantly, as we've talked about, he will really take a huge chunk out of that lead that Eduardo Aparecido has. Derek Kolbaba standing by with Leah. As is always the case, a lot on the line with every ride, but particularly with this one, both of you guys really chasing a world title. How do you go about a rematch? Oh, I mean, shoot, Bruiser's a great bull. Every time he goes, you know he's gonna buck. But uh, one thing about him, you know, if you're in the right spot and you're doing things right, he's gonna feel like a dream, and then you're gonna be a bunch of points. So that's, that's what we're gonna go with, and uh, stick to the basics, stay square, and have fun. Thank you, Craig. Shorty, you mentioned the bull Bad Beagle, Chase Outlaw, with the fourth pick in the draft, excuse me, the fifth pick in the draft, chose that bull. How do you think that matchup's gonna go? Chase has got his hands full, but you know what? Chase likes that. Chase is a guy, he's a fighter, he's a scrapper and you're never going to uh, tell him that he doesn't have a chance to win that's why you got to believe in a guy like chase outlaw but the one i'm really excited is pearl harbor and cooper davis craig that right there is two uh two of the best in the country going head to head it's going to be exciting either way we're going to get to watch cooper davis kaiki pacheco and eduardo aparecido all ride back to back to back and they are the meat of this batting order in this championship round. Joao Ricardo Vieira will start us off. Justin McBride, the bull he was left with, hammer it again. Well, here's the thing. There was no getting around a ranked bull in this championship round. I mean, I, I don't think, you know, usually the bull you get left with is really bad to get by, you know, and 
hammered again is not that bad compared to everything else in there. I mean, it could have been any one of these bulls left for the last pick. I, and if this bull will have his day where he's around to the left and hanging in the air, I think Joe al has got a good shot against him. Well, they have met before. It was in Charlotte towards the end of last season. The bull was very good on that day, 45 and a quarter. In fact, he was better than Joe al. Now, here's the one thing with this bull, going to the left, if you get too far to the inside, he it will hollow out and drop fast. you in there. He will leave you it hanging big time. Hammered again, out only three times this season and getting frisky in the shoot. No problem for Joao, stays nice and calm, looks set again. Mike Lee in the light blue shirt there to keep him safe. There's the nod. championship round in quite a while. I started to show off by saying the writer's motto should be seize the day. And that is exactly what Vienna is able to do. That's how you want to get it started right there. Now make everybody come chase you. Joe Al does a really good job, bull around to the left. He rides him just perfect the whole time, but you watch this bull, he quits kicking. He has no kick whatsoever. His back end keeps coming up. And now he's just gonna give it up right now. He knows he doesn't have a chance. See that when he takes off like that, the judge is really docking, but a good job by Joe Al. He did all he could do. He does his job. He is rewarded with 83 points. And we start with the qualified ride, and that moves Joe Al up to fourth overall. His compatriot, Alex Marsilio, in only his second championship round of his young career, he has chosen Cochise. Big handful right here. Long jumps is the story with Coach East before he ever gets into the spin. He's usually got the guys leaning back and loosened up. Only ready two of his last 27 outs. And make that an emphatic two for 28. Marsilio with no chance against this big Bama Jam. And Coach East has a good day. He always has good days. This is a big, strong bull right here. That's that's the thing, you just, you don't understand it until you get on a bull like this. The sheer power that they've got. When they drop out of the air with their front end and kick, there is a lot of power. Shorty, I'm hearing a challenge. Did, did he press the button? Yeah, and I, you know, I think he's got a chance to get a, a re-ride. That bull, leaving the shoe, that bull rubbed his leg down that, uh, down that post and, uh, I think on the re-ride, if they've got a good enough angle, they might uh, they re might reward him a re-ride. Here's another look, and the judges will take multiple looks at this. And that was the initial contact that Shorty was just referring to. Now it's Mac, you know, again, right up to the judges, and you always say, along with JW and Ty, that you wouldn't want to be one because they Never. have an unenviable job. Never, man. And the bull, I see the bull hit his shoulder, leaving out of there at the one angle we got to look at. You know, and, and it's not one of those real obvious ones where it just pills his laid back and you go, oh yeah, duh, he wiped him off on the chute right there. And the ruling, uh, again, to remind everybody, has to be that the bull basically completely changed direction and impeded the ability of the rider to have a fair out. And so now it becomes very subjective in terms of the judge's decision. I'll say this, if he gets a re-ride right here, I think it's a good break for him. Things are going his way if he gets the re-ride. This is one that's gonna come down to the judge. Well, and we just got word, it will not be a re-ride opportunity for Marsilio. So that buck off will stand. But hopefully he garnered some experience along the way. And at 36 in the world coming into the weekend, fighting for one of those spots at the world finals a few weeks from now, and we transition to another Brazilian, Marco Duce, who made his debut all the way back in Chicago of 2011. He's made six championship rounds already this year, Mac, and in those championship rounds, he's ridden at 66.7%. He's good at this level. Hey, and this is where you want to be good. This is where you make your money in the championship round, man. When you get these kind down, because the guys aren't going to ride a lot of these bulls. If you get points on the board right here, you're going to win something. You started off when you talked about Joao's pairing with Hammered again, and that being pretty darn good. Mystical on paper, one of those bulls you just don't want to match up against. 16 and one in his career. 
because of moves like that, just when it looked like he had lulled Marco to sleep, he throws in a move that throws him off. Yeah, and, and that was pretty uncharacteristic of Mystical to go this far before getting into a spin. Usually a big look right there and back to the right. And here he takes an extra jump or two, kind of get Marco loosened up and right back and then, man, he brings it around the corner. Juicy around the corner right there. Low bowl score, only 42 points. That one from James Clark and Gene Owen. That pairing brings a lot of great bulls to this level. Next up, attempting to match or surpass Joao Ricardo Vieira is Brennan Eldred. This is his third championship round, and he's looking for his first qualified ride at this level. He faces Magic Train, a tall task. Yeah, I think this is an underrated bull. I think when this bull has his day, he's one of the best bulls out there. I think he can compete with Loser and Pearl Harbor. For five seconds, Brennan Eldred was with Magic Train, jump for jump. And then Magic Train <laughs> changed the direction of the tracks. And that ride ends at 5.63. I thought Magic Train was as good as you want one to be. Maybe not quite as much wow factor as Bruiser has, but man, he was good kicking and spinning. It keeps getting steeper, steeper and steeper right here. That is a good, good bull right there and a good effort by Brendan Eldred. 44 and three quarters for Magic Train, further emphasizing, Mac, your point that this bull is the real deal. I thought he could have been 45. He was good, <laughs> man. Well, no, we all know how good this bull is. Pearl Harbor trying to win that world champion bucking bull title, tied with Bruiser in the rankings, only ridden one out of his last 18. Coming up, reigning PBR world champion, Cooper Davis. Guess what, world? <laughs> if you're not ready for Cooper Davis, he's knocking down doors. That was an outstanding bull ride right there. Cooper Davis is simply on a different plane. Cooper Davis has done it again. As the PBR rides on from Colorado, We were just talking about Marco Aguche's great riding percentage in the championship round. His latest buck off drops him down to 57%. No one's been better than Jess Lockwood. Lockwood, 100%. Man, that's pretty impressive. The only downfall is he's only been in five championship rounds. Oh, well, by the way, number two, Derek Kolbaba. Uh-huh. His good friend, the guy who's going to go last against Bruiser in the championship round here, looking to creep up not only in that percentage standard, but also in the world overall standings. Derek Kolbaba will be the last man to leave the shoot. Stormy Wing right behind him, who also had a great pick and chose Mud Shark. Meanwhile, it's Emilio Hesende's turn. This is his sixth championship round of the season. He now faces Speed Demon. Tell you, man, this is gonna be a tall task for Emilio, but I love the way he's been going at it. The last few weeks, this guy, you can tell, every time he leaves, he is all in. You know, he gives it everything he's got, but so does this little bull, Speed Demon. <laughs> I was gonna say, Shorty, Speed Demon's got some fans of his own. He does, Craig, and I am one of them, one of this bull's biggest fans. He's a little tiny bull, but he's uh, he's wired for 220, this bull is. And one of the things about him, he's really fast. Like I said, he's small bull, but watch, he bucks with his head down. What that's going to feel like, he gets steep enough, is that there's nothing between you and the ground. So it gets you on to lean back, and this bull's got enough forward movement that he can toast you once there. He's also a little mean. Well, Speed Demon goes down. And that means Emilio Hacende will get another chance and may have dodged the proverbial bullet right there because Speed Demon has had his way with rider after rider. Yeah, and Speed Demon losing his footing right there. That's something, I think this bull is gonna grow into a world championship caliber, caliber bull and contender. And you can see with moves like that, he's really there, but they've got to keep their feet, you know? It, when they get a rewrite on a bull, it, especially when we get to the finals, they gotta have two good outs. Well, <laughs> look no further than airtime, the past two world championships and the finals, when after one round, he seemed to be a dead lock for that world champion bucking bull title, but then had a problem with the second out. Meanwhile, Shane Proctor, with his pick in the draft, has chosen Catfish John. This bull is as solid as they get. Looking to start to the right. Sometimes about the 
six second mark, you will reverse it. Good for him. Didn't need to throw in the reverse because the speed out of the suit was more than enough to get Proctor off to the side. Yeah, Proctor gets going a little faster than Catfish John. You know, you say it a lot of times, wait for him to pull on you a little bit. Let him pull you around the corner. Proctor gets in a big hurry right here. Inside foot comes up, free arm across the face, and now he's hung up in a bad way. Luckily, he comes out of that pretty good. Another look at Shane Proctor's unfortunate inefficiency here in the championship round. That moves his record to two out of six against the top level Bulls when they get to this standard. And we come now to a pairing that is gonna make your ears perk up just a little bit more. Our defending PBR world champ, Cooper Davis, has chosen one of the two Bulls that are tied for best Bull of the year. Pearl Harper early on now. Seemed unstoppable. He's had a little bit of time off to rest for some health reasons, and now we finally get a chance to see him back in action. Yeah, and I think if the stock contractors would have got to pick the riders instead of the riders picking the bulls, you would have seen Chad Berger pick Cooper Davis because they've got to have a chance to show off these great bulls. These bulls have got to be able to show what they can do just to quick buzz off. That doesn't give the judges a fair chance to really mark them all the points. This is going to be a great match. Well, well, that's a great graphic right there. These two have paired up on three separate occasions. And it's awesome that we highlight the bull scores more than the time Cooper Davis lasted on this bull's back. Pearl Harbor can simply explode. Now it's up to Cooper Davis to be able to handle And Pearl Harbor can go off in the shoot. This bull can be very dangerous. Just ask J.B. Mooney. He's wiped him out in the shoot before. This is a tough bull to get by right here. Believe in yourself, Cooper. Be there, buddy. Keep in mind that both Pearl Harbor and Bruiser each can move ahead of the other in terms of the scores that they need. If it's 45 and three quarters, Pearl Harbor's top eight scores will move him in front the, of yeah. Bruiser. But go, if Bruiser scores now. 46 today, he'll move into the lead. So, Shorty, is that just a question of, in your mind, had Cooper been able to nod a little bit sooner, we wouldn't have gotten to this point, clearly? Well, the, the thing about it, you know, this bull can be dangerous in there, and that, that is, make no mistake, one of the most dangerous places in this arena is in that bucket shoot right there. And this bull's a big bull, and he can go off, like Justin said. That bull wasn't really cooperating with him. They were trying to move him over, but you've got to be so gentle with a bull like that to get him to move over because if you if you move him around too quickly, that can set him off right there. They were doing a great job of trying to get out of there. You just kind of got to sneak out of there on this bull and don't let him know when you're ready. We've got a moment, so let's check in with Leah. I was talking to Cooper right before this championship round, and this is the bull he had his eyes on from the beginning. You'd mentioned, yes, he's been on him three times, and I asked him why he keeps challenging himself with Pearl Harbor, and it's the same answer that Cole Baba gave me. It's that when you ride him and you ride him well, you're going to be a bunch of points. Well, Mac, right, that's the attitude you want to see from any guy that wants to win a world title, right? Well, it, it, that's a big part of the reason why you do this, to try and match up and do things other people can. Pearl Harbor moves to 4-0 against Cooper Davis with a very similar buck off time. Let's look and wait for the score. 3.21 officially, and it is 45 and a quarter. So that will not help Pearl Harbor's cause to move ahead of Bruiser. And it's a good score, but I think it's gonna take more for him to be the world champion bull. And Davis, you gotta wonder, he loses his bull rope right here. That long in the buck and shoot, putting that much strain on yourself, trying that hard for that long. It will wear you out, especially when you get on a ranked bull like this that throws all this power at you. Well, and let's remind everyone, including ourselves, that, you know, that's Cooper Davis, the defending PBR world champ, trying to garner points against Eduardo Aparecido. So a chance not only for Aparecido to distance himself, but also now Kaiki Pacheco. Kaiki with his pick based on his good score in round two. 
Goes up against Jack Shot. This is a big one right here, man. Been successful two times on the bull. We've seen in the 15-15 in Thackerville, Oklahoma. The bull get the better of him. Look for him to be around to the right. And Pacheco is going to have to go at it. Because this bull's going to be tougher today than he is when he starts. These two met earlier this year in Denver at a real-time pain relief event. 91 points on that occasion. 86 points when they matched up in Billings earlier this season. But you hinted at it. The past two times have gone the bull's way. Once again, a costly touch by Taiki. The clock went to eight, but I got to figure that's going to get not only looked at, but taken away. This jack shot, man, he just gets so much stronger at the end and really gets to move. And it's one Pacheco back the whole time. He was doing a really good job trying to stay to the front, stay down. He does such a good job of always keeping his head down. I thought he had him knocked out right here, but you watch as this bull goes forward. Big forward jump, it's gonna bring Kaiki forward. Both feet come back and Ooh, touched right there, yeah. man. Now, keep in mind, what they'll also look at is they will redo the timing of this. So they'll make sure that the clock in the arena matches with, with the official judge's score. But from, and it's hard to see again from that angle. The first angle seemed to clearly illustrate that Pacheco touched beforehand. Now they'll start over and they'll redo, they'll hand time this based on when the bull breaks the plane leaving the chute. Smart bull too because Pacheco's giving it everything he's got to get to the right. And when the bull reverses it, that's what causes the buck off right here and have to stop himself from going over his head with his hand. And it's gonna be hard. From that angle it looks again, that seems clear that it's right around 7.7 .7 seconds. And it's hard as they do this retiming, isn't it, Mac, to come up with three tenths of a second. If you're looking for three one hundredths of a second, yeah, maybe, maybe. that usually happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, you can, clearly, he is touching that bull. Now, if they sync the clock up, it will be officially a buck off. And he had a missed opportunity against Milky Jones in round number one, where he would have gotten a score. And now, it is official. He gets disqualified for the slap a little too early. And Kaiki Pacheco will not make up any ground, it seems, on world number one, Eduardo Aparecido. And we've got a lot more to come in this championship round, including that man right there, our world number one. Winding down the regular season, only four telecasts left. We'll be able to double dip next week in Nampa. You'll see us on CBS for a 15-15 bucking battle, then we'll wind it out here on CBS Sports Network. One show from Raleigh, North Carolina. Our final regular season show from San Jose. That's October 22nd. And then we all head to Las Vegas, November 1st through the 5th. We're not done yet, though, in Colorado Springs. Number of riders left to leave their mark. And our next rider, who is, just happens to be our world number one, is hoping to make a big splash with his votes and his pick in the draft. He chose to burn it down. Yeah, good pick here, too. That Every time I see this bull, he gets better. He really wants to buck hard. Look for him to be around to the right, get steep. Got a lot of different moves to him. I like this pick for Eduardo. Well, and this pick might be a little bit about payback because the last time this bull was out was in the 15-15 bucking battle in Springfield, Missouri a few weeks ago. He was matched up, none other against Eduardo Parasito. That lasted 6.21 seconds. I like to see rematches too like that when the guy knows, hey, he got the best of me, but I felt something in there that I liked about that bull, and that's exactly what this is for Eduardo. If it's more than 87 and a quarter, Fast Eddie will move to the number one position and a chance for him to win his fourth event of the season. Not to mention, extend that lead in the world standings. Same set, the burner down. Starts to get a little touchy. Second qualifying round in our world number one, 
deserves to celebrate. Good stuff right there, man. That's, that's a guy that wants to win a world championship. You know, Pacheco comes down. You don't know how Cole Baba's going to do yet. Picks a bull that's bucked him off before into his hand. But what I like the most is when this bull reverses it. You watch how Eduardo moves around here, doesn't panic, to the front end every time. Doesn't matter what that bull's going to do, Eduardo can ride him when he's going through the movements like that. Moves to the lead in the round and in the event. He's with Leah. Eduardo, a successful ride in the championship round. Builds your confidence? Yeah, I mean, constant event, the strength for last bull, this last. I mean, trend concentrate for ride this bull. I don't know. This bull bucky off me speaks field. I mean, concentrate for hide this bull. Important to remember he doesn't forget, Craig. No, exactly, and that goes back to that point, Mac, of a rematch, of going against the bull you were just up against and trying to get a little payback. Yeah, and, and you know what they feel like, and that's the thing about it. There's no surprises. You know what it's all going to feel like when that lead opens. This is his good friend, Emilio Hacende, who with his rematch and re-ride gets a chance at practice. Yeah, this is a good bull. Big, strong bull. I think this bull should fit Emilio. Emilio's a great big guy. There's going to be plenty for Emilio to get a hold up here. It's a way better matchup than he had with Speed right, yeah. that he got the rewrite on. Hit him to two. After the match, thankfully he gets clear. I started to say after we watched Kaisa Pacheco get called for a late touch, it looks like the same will happen to Hasende. Cracker breaker with his own little parting shot. I think he's getting right. His friends are telling him to he's press the button. thinking about it right here. Going to see about a hip. And the bull clearly hipped himself right there. I think he would have a case to make with the judges. And we haven't heard. Shorty, did you see him press the button? I did not. He looked like he was going to, and then and then I didn't. But, I, you know, the thing is that we got to remember, uh, yes, the bull did hip himself. But from my vantage point, it didn't really change the bull's direction. Uh, didn't cause the buck off. So, uh, I, I don't know how they would how they would call it. Obviously, I'm not a judge and don't want to be, but uh, I don't think he'd get the rewrite anyways. And I agree with you 100%, Shorty. If I was a judge, because I, I don't think it caused the buck off, but here's the deal. I would push it and put it in their hands. Otherwise, I get a zero. I'm going to push the button and say, at least take a look at it. Maybe, maybe they see it and they're like, you know what? He did hip himself. Have another try. Well, we didn't hear the buzzer go off, but Leah, did you see him hit it? I saw him hit it, and he's standing there uh, waiting for some sort of an answer. He's in the middle of the arena still, Craig. Well, to all your points, I mean, this this could be big. I mean, not just the fact that Hasende gets another chance, but um, anytime you can change a buck off to a possible that's score, what I mean. I that's think a good day. I think you've got to try it. You know, otherwise it's going to be a zero. I think clearly on time he comes up short. He had to touch the bull there. Uh, so I would fall back and say, hey, take a look at it and see if he hits himself. And the arena is starting to react. We still do not have official word. And actually, wow, how things can change. He actually made the time, and he is now going to get a qualified ride on Cracker Baker. Breaker, excuse me. So the replay judge was looking at that time. The touch was inconclusive. It looked as though that the evidence showed he made eight seconds. So Mac, wow. Hasende becomes the third Brazilian in this championship round to do his job. Hey, good for Emilio, man. That's that's what effort gets you because he was trying his guts out. The bull had a bad day, so the scores reflect that 80 and a half. But hey, good job for Emilio bearing down and getting another score. And what that does as well in terms of scoring and points is that pushes Kaiki Pacheco and Cooper Davis further down in the event total. Pecking order, so that might mean now, based on their scores and where they are, that Pacheco and Davis might not get any overall points for the weekend. Meanwhile, Gage Gay goes up against Beaver Creek Bow. What a bull this one is. Big and strong, around to the right, some forward movement. Gage Gay cannot miss his front end one time or this ride will be over. This is the 80th out in this bull's career. And he continues to, to impress just here on the Built Ford Tough Series, he's only been ridden once out of nine attempts this year. 
Yeah, he's a tough one. And here's the thing with Beaver Creek Bow. All the guys know what's coming. He's going to be yeah. one, two, a round to the right every time. It's no secret. There's no surprises or tricks. It's can you meet the front end and stay there long enough throughout the course of eight seconds? Well, it's a little bit light with baseball playoffs right around the corner, right? When you know a pitcher's going to throw the heater. Can you hit it, man? That, and that what can is you what do this, with it? That's what this bull does each and every time. Beaver Creek Bow was last out against Cooper Davis in Austin in the championship round there. It lasted six and a half. And finally, Gage Gay gets blown off of Beaver Creek Bow's back just over six seconds. Gage does a really good job for a long time, but you could see it. You could see him get further and further away from the bull, having to make bigger and bigger moves with his free arm. His head coming up right around him. Man, he's in good shape right here. But as it progresses, he comes out a little bit. Now he starts having to make these big moves. Now he can't see him anymore. That bull is just too strong. That's the sort of power that has become synonymous with Beaver Creek Bow. 44, the bull score. Just what you would expect at this championship round level. And we come to our last rider who comes into the championship round with only one qualified ride. That is Chase Outlaw. He was 87 and a half in round two aboard Mar-a-Lago. That was good for second. He almost won his ninth round of the season against Bad Beagle. We've talked a lot about this bull already, Mac, whether it's you, Shorty, whomever. This is the bull that on his best day is right there with some of the top bulls that are considered for the world champion bucket bull. And the strong thing for this bull is he never has an off day. He's very consistent, but I tell you, I would love to see Outlaw get up on his legs and just carve up that beagle right here, because I think he's capable. and look at that dance move that bad beagle threw in there chase outlaw could not keep up and is on the dirt lickety split yeah that's a fancy footwork there on the front end man check it out right boom, boom. there hits he's got chase so set up he's got no chance to get around the corner to the right Back. And that's what I mean with this bull Craig you, you get to the world finals and he's in he's still got himself in contention He's not going to have a bad day. So if Pearl Harbor hips himself or something like that, this bull has a legit shot. Bad Beagle continues his run at perfection this season. The bull score 43 and a quarter, but for the second time, Outlaw is bested by Beagle. This is Denner Barbosa. Had a great solid kick right in the middle of this draft. Chose Hayjack. Lots of kick right here. The, the, the trick for this bull, though, and getting a good ride on him is leaving the shoot clean. is now three for three and applies the tourniquet to everyone else who's yet to ride. Barbosa, who's been second twice this season, has set himself up perfectly for a win here. Man, that, was, that was a really nice ride, too. The little bull leaves the shoot clean. And then when you get on the sweet spot, in the sweet spot on one that kicks as hard as this one does and has this much timing, he could ride this bull all day long. That bull had a good day, and he made him look just ridiculously easy. Best score of the weekend, 89 points, and it couldn't come for a, at a better time for Denner Barbosa. He moves to the overall lead, a full bull ahead of the three men who are yet to go. We are winding down this championship round and our weekend in Colorado Springs. Barbosa just provided some fireworks, but three men will have the final say. The last man out of the shoots, Derek Kolbaba, chose Sweet Pro's Bruiser. If they combine for a whopping total, Kolbaba will win his fourth event of the year. The PBR Built Ford Tough series on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ford F-Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a 2017 Ford F-150 and a trip to the PBR World Finals in Vegas. By Kubota. Visit KubotaUSA.com today. And by 
Cooper Tires. Count on Cooper, an American company since 1914. It's an interesting mix of our final three riders. Australian Sonny Shafirius in his first ever championship round. Stormy Wing trying to find some consistency at this level, the championship round level. Meanwhile, Derek Mobaba, a lot of experience. He has ridden his championship round bowl five of the eight times he's been paired at this level this season. But guess what? Denar Barbosa wants to fool them all and steal this win here in Colorado Springs. 89 points aboard Hayes. Jack, a moment ago, Shorty, has moved him to the lead. How impressed are you so far with all these bulls? Well, you know, I, I think these bulls are, are living up to what they, uh, w w what we expected them to be. Just a great set of bulls here. Um, and we're going to move right now. Uh, we're going to move up to uh, Stormy Wing, it looks like. Um, he's got a bull by the name of Mud Shark. Mud Shark, this is a real electric bull, uh, but I don't think it matters right now what this bull does. I think Stormy Wing has finally, Justin, found his stride. I think this guy's riding better than he's ever ridden before. I expect him to ride this bull and uh, throw the Randolphs at him. Yeah, I'm with you there, Shorty. Bringing the Randolphs. Hey, and the guy, he has been riding so good in either direction. I think this bull will be to the left which bodes well for him, but that's why, you know, we've seen him win the long round today on the board away from his hand. That's the things for Stormy Wing, when he's putting it all together, either direction, because it doesn't matter when you're in the right place, doesn't matter which way the bull's spinning. Hey, so the guys in Shorty, feel free to weigh in on this too. I mean, when we talk about some of these other guys and how confidence, you know, has, has helped change their year, I think that's shortchanging Stormy Wing a little bit. Yes, he's riding better. Mac will go to you first, but he's, something else has clicked for him this season. Well, confidence is a great thing to have, but it don't mean a whole lot unless the mechanics are there. And that's where it's been for Stormy Wing, in my opinion. He's not just trying to hold something, or if he gets a, his back gets a hump in it, he doesn't just stay there and take it. He straightens back up, and he's finishing off rides. Shorty, have you noticed that as well? Absolutely, you know, and that was always Stormy Wing's, it was his go-to. That when, when things got out of, out of hand, he went to that, getting that C in his, in his back, and, and he would stay there, and it was over with. He's always been a real aggressive rider, but that was that was kind of his go-to move, which is a, wasn't a good move. He's figured that out, he's keeping his back straight. I saw him get his uh, C in it the other day, uh, yesterday, and then straighten it back up. Oh. He went into C position awfully fast there, but Mud Shark moving like a great white, and Wing is off early. And give a tip of the hat to Mud Shark right there. This was a great out. Long out of there, Wing is back, and so as he comes forward, everything comes. Both feet come in behind him. That bull had a long jump out of there, and that got his upper body back. Good day for Mud Shark, man. 44 and a half, the bull score to your point, Mac. Absolutely, another great one from DNH Cattle. And longtime fans of this sport know that if there's a bull that has DNH Cattle next to its name, it is probably gonna be like Mud Shark right there. So we move on to the Australian, Sonny Shafirius, who was actually seated behind Stormy Wing coming into this round, but now he will get his chance against Cooper Tires Brown Sugar, another one of those veteran bulls that's just gonna give you an honest day work. Yeah, but you've got to be in great shape to get by him. You can't make, you can't get by with mistakes and still get, get a qualified ride on Brown Sugar. But I tell you, what I've seen out of Sonny thus far, on the weekend, he has been riding really, really good. And the main thing for me is his head. He has kept his chin tucked and kept the bull in sight the entire time. The guy drives good, man. I, I like his chances against Brown Sugar. It doesn't click for him here in this championship round, and Cooper tires. Brown Sugar makes it look easy. The Australian off the 2.7. Well, Brown Sugar, we all know the story on him. He's been a great bull for a long time. Let me point out one thing that championship round bulls have a lot of that, that you don't see as much in long rounds, and that's forward movement. You cannot miss it. If you get behind it, they're so good that they'll finish you off. A little mistake really gets highlighted against them. We are down to our final pairing, and it is a big one. A lot on the line for both Derek Kolbaba as well as Sweet Pro's Bruiser. You've got a rider who's in a 
hunt for a world title, and a bull who wants to do the same. Kobaba, perfect five for five coming into this round. Bruiser, well, he's done pretty much everything a bull can do. If Bruiser is 46 or above, he'll move ahead of Pearl Harbor officially in terms of his average. But Kolbaba is thinking about eight seconds, and we talked about Oklahoma City. If he can just mimic that effort, he's gonna win this event. Yeah, and I think he's got a great chance to do it. And Shorty, we've talked about Kolbaba a lot in the past and getting his knees up on bulls. I think that helps him against a bull like Bruiser because this bull, not only does he get steep, but about five seconds, he will change it up and change directions, and he's got a lot of backup when he does that. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and that's gonna keep him off of this bull's head. We saw Chase Outlaw, or, uh, 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 Jeff Lockwood go down on this bull's head here uh, a couple weeks ago. This bull has that kind of power, and has that kind of down movement, and that backup, then me being up there and behind his shoulder is gonna help him a lot. Here comes the backup. Derek Kolbaba kicks it into high gear and shows Bruiser who's boss. Kolbaba has won for the fourth time this season. He only needed 82, and it's a lot more than that. How high over 90 are we going to get? Kolbaba wins Colorado Springs. Great day. That's what I love to see. A huge bull score. Not quite 46 that he was needing, but 45 and three quarters. That was a great ride by Cole Baba. A great job by the Bulls. That you can't ask for it any better in professional bull riding than that right there. Around to the left, kick and spinning. And then right here, boy, here comes the hang time. The drop. Now going with the backup. Cole Baba never tries to ride with one hole, shuffling his feet. Great job, man. It doesn't happen often. But now, Derek Kolbaba has gone back-to-back -back wins. New York, Uniondale, last weekend, now Colorado Springs. He came into the weekend needing 700 and change to move to the world number one spot. He's not going to be our world number one, but Derek Kolbaba, Kolbaba, excuse me, taking huge chunks out of that difference between him and the other riders. Kolbaba, your winner. He's standing by with Leah. Once again, I'm in the winner's circle with Derek Kolbaba. Lately, Derek, you can do no wrong. Explain your mindset when you're in the shoot, about ready to nod for that championship bowl. Oh, it's uh, it's what we all dream of, you know what I mean? You got that that pressure kind of building on you, and uh, that's an awesome bowl. And you know, every time you have him, you give the opportunity to be a lot of points. This week, your father gave you some sound advice on what you needed to do technically. What was that? Oh, yeah, he just kind of boosted my confidence a little bit. and and uh, told me that, uh, you know, where I was wasn't exactly where I should be. So it kind of boosted me up and, and kind of gave me a little kick in the pants to, to get that fire. And where do you want to be? I get a world champ. Congratulations, one step closer with this win. Time for our Kubota Tractors ride of the day, Matt. Could there be any other? No, they're good. Because this was by far the best ride of the day on the best bull in the world. Kolbaba gets it done. This guy is hot right now. Well, for Derek Kolbaba, Shorty Gorham, it's the answer you expect, but you still want to hear it, don't you? That it's world championship or bust. I, you know, I think I think he 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 just put an explanation point on that mm -hmm. tonight with that ride. I think this is a man on a mission. I think this is a man that now believes in himself. He believes that he has what it takes to win that world title. And confidence comes from believing in yourself. I think he's got it all right now. Well, you've got two gold buckles, my friend. Describe what that feeling is like when you feel you can do no wrong on the back of a bull. Well, when you know that you can stay in the moment and ride whatever bull is run underneath of you and not really worry about the world championship, that's when it comes to you. That's what Cole Bob is doing a great job of right now. Cole Bob gets another win. Let's take a look at the updated world standings. Eduardo Aparecido solidifies that number one position, but the big mover yet again Derek Kolbaba, the placing, he goes from fifth to third, but more specifically, he is now only 453 points out of that number one spot.
Well, it's time for us to pack up our Spurs and head out of town. There are only three more stops on our road to the World Finals. You can join us next Sunday when the Cowboys and Bulls we battle in Nampa, Idaho. We're going to have coverage beginning in the afternoon on CBS and then continuing later on right here on CBS Sports Network. For Justin McBride, Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.